Welcome to another episode of Crime Pays with Biden and he does and I'm here with one of my favorite insects in North America, probably the most obnoxious singing insect in North America, generally harmless, but irritating as hell to human beings. And that makes it probably top of my list of coolest insects. I think it's generally harmless, but irritates the shit out of most people. I, I really have a fondness. I got a soft spot in my heart for it. This is Quesada gigas, the giant cicada, okay? The largest cicada species, so far as I know, we're at the northern end of the range here in South Texas. They range on down into northern Argentina. I just seen them in Guanajuato and Carretero, you know, singing up in a huizache and a mesquite trees. Generally, they seem to like it lower elevation, you know, in Mexico. Like, lower, low elevation in central Mexico is like 3,000, 4,000 feet where all the cool cacti grow. All right. Uh, anyway, we're going to take a look. You can see they're all over uh, this uh, this mesquite canopy here. Um, you know, sometimes you can hear them. You'll hear scattered ones in the Rio Grande Valley where I am right now. But this is this is by far one of the largest populations I've seen since so much habitat has been lost and cleared, etc. So you're not going to find any in the depressing strip malls in the region. You got to find intact thorn scrub and mesquite and huizache. Uh, habitat. Huisache is just another type of leguminous tree. It's in a mimosoid subfamily. Anyway, let's go check it out. Here we go. Oh, you beautiful tender beast. Look at that proboscis. What a large proboscis you have. Oh my god. And that white, all that white stuff on the underside. What's that? What's going on there? I'll let you go. Don't worry. Look, you got like, it looks like you're wearing your little mask. Beautiful colors on you. Oh, that proboscis is really long as hell. Look at her eyes. God damn, that's beautiful. That's a work of art unto itself. Evolutionary masterpiece. Oh, I love you. I love you so much. I'm, hold on, just chill. You're gonna hurt yourself. Look at the, look at their look at their abdomen and their ass too. Look at her little ass. One just peed on me as well. There's like three thousand species of cicada, if not more. All over the world. What a cool little group of insects. Cool, harmless, and irritating as hell. Ah, beautiful. All right, let's go listen to some of them. Let's go hear what their song sounds like. Okay, you got two species there. You got that one that sounds like an electrical short, and then you got the much more obnoxious... Can you hear them? The much more obnoxious giant cicada, Quesada gigas. Sounds like that... See, and they get that start up, that ramp, it goes, eh, 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 like, it's like, a, you know, it's like revving up. It's so obnoxious, it has to warm up first. I don't know who this guy is. That's a whole different, that's a whole different species. That's the, those little black and white ones that's making that more higher pitch sound. Ah. Uh, talk to me, Quesada Gigas, talk to me. Ah, oh, it's beautiful. It's beauty to me. You know, if someone asked me to make the most obnoxious sound that I could think up, it would sound something like that. You're just vocalizing. Just using my vocal cords. <laughs> it's so amazing. You know how much I love you? Do you know? Look at it. They got a nice camouflage. See that? So they can blend in without getting eaten by birds. And like most cicadas, they come out at night. There you go. Took off. See, there's so many here. There's another one right there. All right? Lay low during the day, try not to get eaten, and then sing like hell at night. And irritate the shit out of any human being uh, within an earshot. I mean, you can hear these things from upwards of three or 400 yards away. It's hilarious. It's absolutely fucking hilarious. I've got friends, well-respected friends, who are botanists and plant people, naturalists, whatever the shit, biologists, and many of them can't even stand this thing. I love it. The first time I heard it a couple years ago, I couldn't help but wonder what the shit is that. It sounds like one of those obnoxious electric hand buzzards, you know, that the, you know, were popular in the 80s at like gag stores and stuff, you know, like typical like Pee Wee Herman style hand buzzer. That's what this thing sounds like, but somehow more obnoxious and louder. You can see he's just blending right in with this Wisache, as you can see up there. This kind of looks like a mesquite, a little bit, uh, little bit spinier, a few more thorns than a mesquite, but the roots are what, uh, what these guys feast on when they're in their larval stage underground. 
God, look at it. Look, oh, he's got his two little red, what are those two little red beads? God, their eyes are beautiful too. Beautiful eyes, beautiful green eyes. You get some hairs on there too. What's that white stuff? Is that wax or is that some sort of, you got a pathogen? Look at that. Just hanging out, waiting to be making a loud ass song. You know, they go off during the day too. I've heard a couple in the distance, but uh, primarily their time of activity when they're singing the loudest and the most obnoxiously is uh, a little bit at dawn and especially at dusk. And they finish up by like 9.30. I guess this is a friend's property. She was telling me that they were going till like four in the morning last night, which I really appreciate. But I can also see how that would make some people try to spray them with raid or... You know, some people in a region, you know, God, if you got a thing with cicadas, you got a, if you got a problem with cicadas, you got a problem with me. I love these things. And I can't get over how many there are too. It's a, it's, there's a lot here. I mean, normally you'll just hear scattered individuals, you know, walking through a neighborhood or something, you know, up in the mesquites and you can hear them by the, you can tell what species it is just by the call. Like all cicadas, they lurk in the ground and they come out at night, generally emerge at night. And then they hang out for a few weeks and uh, get it done. You know, mate, female oviposits the eggs in the uh, the trees and then they just drop out and then the eggs go into the, the larva go into the ground, burrow down there and hang out for a while, sucking on the roots of the mesquite and all the other legumes. Oh, there's one that just got murked by a bird. Kind of funny. Look, <laughs> look at the mask though. That'd be a cool, that'd be a cool Halloween mask. Look at that. You often can't find them in populations this big anymore in the region due to all the development. When they bulldoze the thorn scrub and put up, you know, the tacky McMansions and that kind of shit, they, they plant oaks. They plant non-native uh, Quercus virginiana, which is not native to the region. I mean, the closest ones are up in the sand sheet and they don't get that big. And they don't even plant that ecotype anyway down here. They get rid of all the mesquites, they plant oaks because it looks more like the suburbs. But this, this insect, this cicada, needs the mesquites and all the mimosoid legumes. Subfamily mimosoidea, the huisaches, the mesquites, etc. God, I just, I, <laughs> I've never loved an insect more. So the first time I ever heard this, I just, I couldn't get over how fucking hilarious it was. So those guys, those guys were underground for four years. That's the duration. Feasting on the roots of Wisache, which is kind of weedy. It's like a weedy native tree. Very fast growing. Oh, look, you see that's got Schizophilum commune fungus on it. That dead branch right there. Very important tree, and it's it's a great tree too because it smells it smells delicious when it flowers. Little yellow poof balls when they flower, and it smells incredible. You can smell them from 20 feet away. And important for the cicadas. It's like their main food source. This and mesquite. They just busted out probably a few days ago. Their little exoskeletons. So wonderfully obnoxious. You go to nature for the best art. Look at that. Look at the damn... That, that white material is kind of blowing my mind too. What is that? It looks like a, like a white lipid. What's the, what's the adaptive benefit of that? I just can't get over their eyes. They're so, so, so fucking gorgeous. Did you know that? Again, just perfectly camouflaged. So they don't get eaten during the day. Look at, look at this guy. Look, these guys are always lurking. They're always just lurking, hanging out. Cute little anole. You get the invasive ones and the native one. I mean, any invasive, it's it's from Cuba, so mm -hmm. it's not not ones. not too far removed. You know, those islands were all connected at some point. They're connected to the lineages that exist here. Oh shit! They're just trying not to get trying not to get stabbed by that guy. He was just looking right at me. I got a little too close. Well, I was. Uh, I'm not here for you. Don't worry. I'm here for you. You wonderful beast. Such a cool pattern on their thorax and abdomen, too. God, I, love, I fucking love cicadas. They're so cool. So much diversity. And they're the, the ideal uh, gateway for kids, too, to get into uh, biology and natural sciences because they're such a cool bug. They're loud. 
they're obnoxious and you can hold them without having to worry about getting bitten or stung. The most obnoxious insect in North America. I love you, Quesada Gigas. All right, go irritate the shit out of people. Go, go, take off. You could just hear them flapping around up there. See that? See, these things are like prime food source for so many of the birds and mammals in a region, or at least they were when their populations were larger before everything got destroyed, that they've evolved such an awareness of, uh, <laughs> of anything around them that might eat them. So you get close and they take off. Yeah, I've never seen a population this big. Not here, not here in South Texas. Probably in Mexico there's still some pretty robust populations, but I've never gone into, you know, like a mesquite understory. Well, there's not even any left here, really. And, uh, and just heard them flying around like this. Normally you just hear them by their call, you know, scattered individuals uh, throughout a neighborhood or something, you know. There's a lot of mesquites in the neighborhoods here. Not enough to sustain a huge population. Plus, you got to figure all the nasty shit people are always pouring on the grass. You know, all the stupid lawn care, uh, pesticides, herbicides, fertilizers. It probably takes a lot of these things out since they're only like six inches below. See, look at that guy. Six or seven inches below. Apparently, I don't like loud Italians. I can't blame them. I mean, I have a preference for them, but uh, a lot of people can't. It's crazy how many Texans don't appreciate mesquite. Right, a lot of people, I've heard people mistakenly call it invasive. No native plant can be invasive. Invasive doesn't just mean aggressive. It just, it, it means, you know, came here from another continent, generally. A separate ecosystem. Often the, the longer those ecosystems have been separated, the more invasive it's going to be. So there's a whole, you know, there's a whole biogeographical factor in the word invasive. Miskeets aren't invasive. They're were, they a were really robust tree, and if they're dominating a spot, it's generally just a sign of overgrazing and bad land management. But mesquites and uh, huisaches and so many of those cool legumes and, and mimosoidae are what, what these guys need. That's what they evolved with. That's what they specialize on. And what's good about them? What do they, quote, do? Most obnoxious and ignorant question you could ask a biologist, but uh, what do they do? They, they su help support the ecosystem. They're a vital cog in a functioning ecosystem. All right, what do these do? They, they feed a ton of birds for starters. Look at that guy, he blends in so well. They feed a ton of birds for starters. All right, they move nitrogen through the ecosystem. They aerate the soil and they're just fucking cool. All right, things don't need a human purpose to deserve the right to exist. Millions of years evolving together in an ecosystem should be enough. That's virtue enough. They're a vital cog in the machine, the living machine that is the biosphere. Anyway, that's all I got for you today. Have a good rest of your day. Go fuck yourself. Bye. Plant some goddamn uh, mesquites and wisaches if you live in South Texas. Yeah, they really love the Vichelia, the Far Vichelia farnesiana, the huisache. Like my friend Sam Dreggy says, Plants are just scaffolding for insects. And he, you know, he's not wrong. But there's a snout left. There were a couple snout. There was a snout migration a few days ago. Millions of them coming through. I think they, I don't know which way they were going, south or north or what, but there were quite a few. Hey, you want to take it? Let it go. You can, you can release it. Let's, baby, let's go put it on a tree, okay? I haven't any mosquitoes yet, though. Go forth, young beast. Go forth into the world. Look at all the fireflies. That's all the lightning bugs. God, there's so many. That's such a nice sight. Yeah, look at the little ox beetle. Well, not little, huge guy just burrowing in. I couldn't even get photos of him. Okay, no, 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 don't hurt him, don't hurt him. But I'm trying to dig. You're trying to dig? You're not going to get that, you're not going to get her out.
It's crazy to think that this is what night sounded like before the surrounding region got turned into a giant parking lot and strip mall. This is what nights were like. And you could see a lot of stars, too, instead of the pink light pollution created by all the billboards for personal injury attorneys and commercial retail signs. See, this is what we evolved for, not being stuck under bright lights and asphalt. You know, not knocking cities, I love them, but I'm more just knocking sprawl. If you're gonna build a city, put, put nature in it. Otherwise, it gets fucking depressing, you know? Nice jet overhead, by the way. <laughs> there's still places like this, but there's not many of them left in this region. At least not in the United States. You gotta go across the border to Mexico. The sprawl just continues. So. Okay, while I'm here, while I'm here, I just figured I might as well show what my friend is doing. She's look, she's raising all the native cactus. She's created, she's basically farming native cactus, farming the seed so she can produce more of it. See, there's fruits maturing right there. So this is Hamato cactus hematocanthus. Uh, but it's the variety that's native to the Rio Grande Valley. So it, it's uh, a little bit phenotypically different. The ecotypically different, that's a better way to put it, because the whole population is like that. Uh, from the uh, the West Texas, the West Texas species. Look at all those fruits. You get a little bit of uh, native native weeds around here, like the Malvastrum and stuff, but that's good. Doesn't doesn't cause them to get as cooked. And then you just mulch with uh, with rock. Look at that though. It's great. So you get a ton of seed, then you can give the seed to people, get more people growing it, and slowly start to rebound populations because there's been so much land clearance and development here. This species gets a lot bigger than this too. They can get seven times as tall. They can get like two feet tall. I've seen some very large ones. See how they've got those hooked spines? And they've got ribs, not tubercles, just uh, just vertical ribs. You get hematocactus setospinus down here as well, aka hematocactus bicolor. And the West Texas variety is a little bit more blue, and it's got uh, much longer spines than this. It's just got a different overall growth form. It doesn't tend to get as tall either. Ah, oh, there, see, there's one blooming. I got a little seedling. It's like three three years old, and it's already a foot tall. And just it had uh, 15 flowers on it a month ago. Cactus flowers generally don't last too long, only a couple days, but still, look at that bee just digging into those stamens beneath that stigma. Such a great species, you know. They, I can't believe they don't sell this at like the Home Despot Garden Center. They sell all these all these cacti from South America and etc. You know, pl plants that generally aren't going to do as well here. We got so many cool native cacti, they don't grow any of those. Over there you got Astrophyta mysterious, all seed grown, planted in the ground, not in pots. That's Horse Crippler, Echinocactus texensis, now Homolocephalus texensis, Mammillaria hyderi. So grow them from seed, get them in the ground. And they can take a lot more moisture once they're in the ground too. And, you know, in, in situ, in, in habitat, you'll find these growing beneath nurse plants. And you can give them a little bit more light when you're growing them in cultivation because the conditions are a little bit better for them, you know, since they're getting watered or they're generally, generally better cared for in cultivation. There's Corophantha macromeris. Over there you got Mammillaria spherica. That's a great one. Beneath all these uh, mostly native quote-unquote weeds. But you got to go in there, you got to pull the weeds once in a while, but uh, you can see she's got a shade cloth too, because it's just too hot most of the year to give them direct full sun. So you got to give them a little bit of shade, but look at the astros too. Look at that. Something came by and nibbled on that, it looks like. Look at that. It's sad that this is what you have to do, you know. I mean, this would be nice to do anyway, even if the populations weren't getting destroyed, but... Uh, since the populations are self-threatened. Oh, there's a fruit. This is a little meditation. I'm going to weed this for her. This is a little meditation garden. You get a spot like this, you come out here and you just, just lurk and meditate. Look at all those horse cripplers, too. Just threw the pot straight in there. So that's a bunch of different seedlings. But you can separate them later. 
I'd come in here and weed a little bit, hang out, you know? Maybe bring the electric tennis racket to electrocute mosquitoes. Yeah, look at all that. That's all horse cripplers. Such a great species. And they get massive, too. They get the size of hubcaps. Mammillaria hyderi, such a wonderful species. Oh, there's a... Is that a Bermuda? I think so. Yeah, we get we get Bermuda grass out of there. That's a, such a bad one. Brutal. Ah, look at that. God, that's nice. Just using the little pebbles as mulch. Helps keep the weeds down a little bit. <laughs> not, not too much, obviously. We get some very vigorous uh, native weeds down here. They grow, look at that Ruelia, too. That's a, that's a quote-unquote weed. Pops up. It's just volunteers everywhere. Oh, and then she got Randia Regocarpa Rubiaceae, the coffee family. Which are, these are dioecious plants. You can see they got spines too, but those are the, the fruits maturing right there. Looking like little melons. You got opposite leaves and you get this kind of, this kind of cross branching structure too, which is why they call it crucio. But apparently the chachalacas love these. You know, our resident uh, little pheasant-like bird, mischievous little bastard bird. I love them. So you got to get a male and a female and, uh, and you'll get good fruit. It's just a living bird feeder. Really cool plant too. Flowers smell good when they go off as well. A uh, new housing development going up. That's great. Look at that car, a car just hanging out. He's just, he's hanging out. He's trying to see if he could find, you know, perhaps find something to eat or nibble on. Giant trash pile. They just demolished one house that sat on like 20 acres. It was the only house on that 20 acres. It was a large land plot. And then they're going to divide it up into much smaller plots and put up McMansions, tacky McMansions with no taste or visual appeal. So that's where all the habitat goes. In case you're curious, 